Hey everyone, my name is Peyton, and in this video I want to go over using Blueprint Actors for environment creation. So in general this will be a pretty basic uh, tutorial going over how to set up Blueprint Actors and everything. I have done some Blueprint Actors in the past specifically for my um, fan animation and everything, actually setting that up so I could have some nice instancing. Uh, but I also wanted to show just yeah general basics of actually setting one up and why it could be useful for larger environments. So I have this uh, little street storefront environment that we see here, and I am starting to like you know the likes that are going on, and I have the the storefronts and everything. Um, and so there are a variety of blueprints that you can create, and in general, a blueprint is uh, it actually allows you to also do some um, visual scripting as well uh, for an actor and be able to make different instances that you can actually control in a variety of ways. But uh, for the instance that I'm going for is I'm just going to make one of the static meshes that I brought in uh, actually into a blueprint. That way it can combine um, a few things to it and yeah, can be a little bit easier to place around um, and have some more features than just the basic static mesh. So what I want to do first is, as we see here, I have my street lamp um, right there, but I also have like my uh, spotlight here that you know is actually helping out uh, with the scene. Of course, those are separate. One thing you can do is technically you could grab both and just group them together, um, and so that's one way you could set that up. But if we're wanting to, you know, think about, okay, what if we want to change stuff pretty easily? We don't have to click on all of the different uh, lamps and actually control it that way. I think having a blueprint actor that we place around can be really nice um, and really save yeah, a good amount of time. So I'm going to go down here to my actual content browser and I'm going to right click and go to blueprint. And what I want to do is basically just make a blueprint class and then actually click on actor. So, um, as I said, there's a ton of different blueprint types that you have. Your character that you run around in this scene is a blueprint. Uh, and, yeah, player controller, everything else. But I just want to focus on an actor blueprint. Um, and as you see here, it's an object that could be placed or spawned into the world. And we can really expand upon, you know, what that really means and what all it entails. So I'm going to click here and now have a blueprint. I'm going to call this one lamp uh, post and there we go. And so if I double click on this, we actually open it up. You'll see that we currently have nothing in it. Um, so what we want to do first is of course actually get our street lamp in. So I'm going to just drag it and drop it in here. Um, and now we have our street lamp. So I can already take my lamp post now and drag it out into the scene. Uh, one thing that we might notice is if I check the actual scale rate here, looks like I have a 1.25 um, in the main scene. So what I could do in here also is just actually change that uh, scale amount. So if I locked the scale and do 1.25, um, you know, there we have that scale. Uh, just in case I wanted to scale it actually in here. And so now if I compile it, it should be the same height. So um, blueprints really allow you to be able to like edit everything inside of your entire scene that has those different actors. So instead of needing to actually go into Maya or something and do adjustments, uh, some of those things that we can't do, like editing a light um, and the intensity of it or the color of it, uh, it's really nice to be able to have it towards instance throughout the level uh, once again. So I'm going to go ahead and actually um, can delete this one real quick. And I'm going to select all of my street lights in the scene that we have here. And actually, I can go over here and I can uh, right click and then say uh, replace selected actors with my lamp post blueprint. So there we go. And yeah, I just need to make sure the scale is fixed because I actually did the scale inside of the blueprint itself. Um, so now they are the exact same. And one other thing I need to do is actually get rid of all those spotlights that are in there um, so far. 
So there we go. Now all of these are actually our blueprints. Um, and I can go ahead and double click back on my blueprint again. And you'll have the, of course, the event graph, which this is where you can do some visual scripting, um, have some certain commands and everything. Uh, but I'm not really gonna focus on that right now. Uh, what I want to do is just keep it really simple for this video. And I'm gonna go back over to my viewport and I want to add a spotlight. So I'm gonna type in spot to the uh, add components section. And I'm gonna click here. And now I have a spotlight and I'm gonna drag this up and basically place it where my light is. So yeah, bring it down a bit and there we go. So we now have our spotlight in there. Um, you know, I might need to do a couple of uh, adjustments to it overall, but you can see as well, um, probably in the side here, as I adjust these things, um, it's happening throughout the entire scene to all of them. So it really helps a lot when you are working in a large scene um, to be able to have this controllability. Uh, I'm going to set my light to actually be temperature based so we can bring it down to maybe 3500 um, Kelvin. And yeah, and then what I'm going to do as well have my titration radius that way it's actually hitting the ground uh, you can see if I pull it up it's not impacting it as much and then I can easily like yeah adjust my intensity as well uh, with that so if I really want it to be a bit brighter um, and it's really nice because the the placement of it is going everywhere um, throughout the entire scene so uh, again, that's really the emphasis that I'm wanting to um, yeah, show in this one at least is how uh, it's really nice, especially with large instancing like this, um, to where you can really iterate and work throughout your environments um, quite quickly when you do set up things like blueprints. Uh, even if I were to set up a building, um, you know, I have all these individual pieces that are built out inside of the uh, engine here, but I could technically grab all of these and I could make them into a blueprint instead And then I could just place that blueprint around and I don't have to like rebuild a building each time So if you are wanting to make actual like building kits uh, That have some variation and stuff to them and you you place them around um, It can be nice for those types of instances as well uh, or even if you were doing um, some smaller like prop set dressing and you didn't want everything to actually like yeah be um let me show an example of this uh so if you didn't want everything to be like combined into a single mesh and you were keeping things separate overall uh it could be really nice to do the prop set dressing in here um so like if i had a uh an effects where i had some um, maybe some bugs or something flying around this light. Instead of having to manually place those, I could also place them into the blueprint and uh, it would, yeah, just kind of keep things, um, you know, focused around this one specific asset. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the main goal of this video is just to show the simplicity of it and how to set it up, why it can be useful. Uh, I'll probably d dive in a bit more into, um, you know, a lot more use cases with them because I think they are pretty great for uh, environment art and just general um, creation within Unreal Engine. Um, but besides that, yeah, if you have any other questions or so about this, feel free to drop them below in the comments and I will see you in the next video.